Hi, welcome to rule of acquisition number 11. Ex infinitum unum, ex, in, ex unum infinitum, which means it's the Latin for from infinity one, from one infinity, which is a theory observation duality, and I'll explain what all that means. And this, we're getting a lot of corollaries on these rules of acquisition. I try, I can't really break this up into multiple videos and make each give their each own number simply because these are too co these are too tightly connected that trying to put these concepts across multiple videos will, will make them confusing to watch. So these all have to be fired off in sequence and therefore and these are all basically just corollaries of this. A corollary is, is something that doesn't tell you anything new but it's a different way to say something else which expands the meaning but not really explains more. It's kind of a uh, hard way to say it, but uh, this rule of acquisition demonstrates a duality between theory and observation, which is very important to properly understand our position in the universe. This duality is very easy to demonstrate. However, scientists are completely unaware of it and its profound ramification. Oh, uh, that might be an overstatement. I'm not 100% sure, but it seems to me they are. So again, we use this analogy a lot in the rules of acquisition series, where we use dots to represent observations, and we use a line to represent the theory that fits those observations, theory or model. Okay, and so ex unum infinitum, from one infinity, if you only have one observation, there are infinite theories you can put through that observation infinite. Pick any shape, line, form, figure. There's infinite that can fit if you only have one observation. And therefore, if you only have one observation, you're going to have infinite theories that fit that observation. One plus one equal two does not tell you much about the universe. You had a few more observations Okay, you start limiting the number of theories that could possibly fit, but you could still have this. You could still have this. You could still have this. Okay, but you but you are limited in your set from before. Okay, then we add a few more points. Okay, well, okay, it kind of looks like a circle. Yeah, maybe we got a circle. Well, that could still be something that's a multi-sided figure something of that nature. So we take a few more observations. At this point physicists would probably say, well it's too strange just like that video on quantum mechanics that was homework a while back. It's too strange for us to even understand. Uh, it's too random. It's, it's quantum, you know, and it's just too random. That doesn't mean we can't figure it out. If, if, I don't accept the argument that anything is too strange for us to understand. If anything we are being too limited in our thinking to understand, but once we understand it, we're going to find out it might be actually something quite simple. Okay, and this gets to the point now that from infinity one, if you have infinite observations, infinite observations, then you can come down to a single theory. Okay, because by adding more points, we actually get rid of this as a possibility, and we get rid of the yellow triangle as a possibility. And the star becomes, and there may be other shapes other than the star that fit. Okay, we don't know. But as if you go to infinite points in theory, then you go to one theory. So therefore, the way it goes is from one observation you can have infinite theories. From infinite observations you'll only have one theory left. Okay, so logically no number of positive outcomes at the level of experiment testing can confirm my scientific theory but a single counter example can show a theory to be false. But if you have infinite observations that means there's no counter, counter examples left. And therefore, if you have infinite observations, then you can have approve a theory correct. Because after you've got infinite observations that agree with your theory, there can be no counterexamples remaining. 
and therefore your theory must be correct and by definition your theory is the only one. So we conclude the only way to prove a theory is true is to prove no counterexamples exist. This would require infinite observations. And so what rule of acquisition means here is to prove a theory correct, one, it would mean that we have to observe everything, everywhere, every when. This would require infinite observations at all points in the universe, at all times past and present, and all points beyond the universe, otherwise we could never ever be sure that there's not another explanation slash theory. Thus, only infinite observations could a single theory be proven. And, and this is just repeating what I said before. It takes infinite observations to confirm a single theory, which is not possible. And a single observation results in infinite possibilities. This is impractical. So we exist somewhere in between these extremes. And because we have a limited number of observations, and we will only ever have a limited number of observations, this leads us to rule of acquisition 11a. We should expect a plurality of useful models to coexist. This idea of monotheorism, where there's only one theory, and that we could possibly know what that is right now, is complete and utter bullshit. Sorry. But the number of useful theories will dwindle when our footprint in the universe expands and more observations can be made which provide the counterexamples to the ones, to the other theories that we are presently coexisting peacefully. So as we progress, we'll start dwindling those coexisting theories down. We should not automatically assume that one of them we know now is irrefutable and all the other are crackpot theories. We are not advanced in science enough to be able to say any of that for sure. The only thing that matters, the only way you can prove a theory to be a bad theory is to find a point where they do not agree with observation. Okay, and we should not think that a theory is ultimately true, only that no counterexample has yet been found. Because we haven't expanded our footprint in the universe to find the counterexamples yet. And this leads us to rule of acquisition 11b. When I did my graduate thesis and the dean of the School of Engineering found out what I was doing my graduate thesis on, he automatically, without even looking at anything I had done, said Maxwell's equations are irrefutable. Okay, let's put aside the fact that I can tear Maxwell's equations a new butthole. Let's just assume that they are irrefutable for the sake of this argument. Being irrefutable does not mean another model it doesn't exist. In other words, irrefutability does not prove it's exclusive. And correct answers, therefore, do not prove exclusivity. And therefore, we go back to rule of acquisition one, correct answers prove nothing. So really, 11b is kind of a corollary of rule of acquisition one. The reason why I made the rule of acquisition one the rule of acquisition one, it is the one that transcends all the others. And therefore, this leads us to rule of acquisition 11c, which is based on 11b. that says that theory A in no way can be used to prove or disprove theory B. In other words, the existence of A does not preclude B, because what if B were discovered first? If new electromagnetism was discovered first, and this chump named Axwell, Maxwell came into Fairfield University and said to the dean, well, I got these new models of the, well, the dean also would probably say, well, no, ethereum can't, or new electromagnetism is irrefutable. They get the same garbage. We always seem to attach to the first thing we know. And we always, like, like little chickens that, that map to their mother, and that's now their mother, and that's what we seem to be doing as humans. The first theory we get that gives experimentally accurate results, we map to that, and that becomes our mother, and nobody else will ever lodge that from our silly little brains. Okay, and that A gets the same answers as B does not prove either is correct because rule of acquisition, uh, one is that you can never prove anything correct unless you have infinite observations. And rule of acquisition 70 teaches there's a, probably a third theory C which is more fun. In other words, if A and B get the same answer, then that's kind of an ambiguity. And we should start looking to say, hey, wait a minute, maybe there's something more fundamental than these two. And that's what we're doing with the foundation series a dipole experiment. And that A and B do not agree means either A or B is certainly wrong. But odds are, they're both wrong. 
you have to see which one matches observation better to know which one is, is less wrong. Okay, Because until we get to the end, we can never prove anything right until we do a, a infinite observations. And this leads to rule of acquisition 11D. Monotheorism is not practical. The prevalence of The prevalence of monotheorism is rampant throughout science and engineering. And alternative science outlets are just as bad. They're both doing the same thing. Oh, I'm right and you're wrong. No, I'm right and you're wrong. And in fact, they most some of them might be equally right. Who the heck knows? They're too busy, you know, sitting in their little fort pointing fingers at each other saying, no, you're wrong, and they don't even look at what each other has. Logically, in the end, in the very end, only one theory will prevail. However, it may, may take multiple competing theories for us to get there. Preference to a single theory now, to the exclusion of all others, is foolish and only can lead to stagnation. So this you know, reiterates rule of acquisition number four, the utility imperative. The purpose of science is to develop useful theories. Stop wasting time worrying over which one's right. Odds are they're all wrong. But if we can get useful theories going, that are valid within our realm, that we need them to be valid, and that are valid at least for the next couple of years, that are valid or at least where we need to go in the immediate future, then we can develop machines and tools to help expand our footprint to see where these theories break down or where they're not true. And then we can come up with the other observations to select one over the other. That's part of my gateway feedback theory of science. Okay, we're, we could use the tools now to develop the starship to get us to the edge of the galaxy so that we can say, ah, at the edge of the galaxy, something different's going on. These particular things we hold true no longer fit, and therefore now we have another observation which selects one over another. We need to expand our footprint. All the observations we made are from the scum layer on the surface of the Earth, and a few from space probes we sent out into space but most of them are from the scum layer on the Earth. And to assume that anything we measure in the scum layer of the Earth is true throughout the galaxies and the universe is complete and utter silliness and arrogance. So just to reiterate, we have rule of acquisition 11, ex infinitum unum, ex unum infinitum. From infinity, one, from one, infinity. That's what a duality is. It's kind of, you know... 11a, expect the coexistence of multiple useful theories right up until the very end. 11b, irrefutability does not prove exclusivity. 11c, theory A in no way can be used to prove or disprove theory B. And this should be 11d, monotheorism is not practical. Thank you very much. No more voodoo physics. And I hope to get some more videos out in two weeks. We'll see. I've got so much going on, a lot, especially with cold weather, work, etc., etc. Take care.